So in the previous video, we got some theoretical understanding about what database scaling is, how to do vertical scaling, how to do horizontal scaling. We talked about sharding and rebalancing. In this video, let's try to experience how sharding actually works and see how it goes. I hope you're ready. Let's get started. Welcome back engineers. In this video, let's try to shard some data using MongoDB and Docker. Let's see how this goes. So for this, we're going to use MongoDB, which is one of the popular document store databases. And we're going to use Docker because we're going to spin up multiple MongoDB instances and see how they can be used for sharding. So we're going to need four MongoDB pieces, four servers basically. And uh, let's see how that goes so a couple of them will be shards so let's say this is shard one and this is shard two so we're going to split our data into these two shards based on some logic right and uh, there's going to be a config server which will take care of uh, keeping the metadata of these two shards so this is responsible for holding the metadata so metadata includes what chunk is uh, available in which shard and what are the chunk sizes, uh, when to do rebalancing and all those things. So this config server is responsible for all that. So rebalancing, basically when to do chunking, when to move chunks around. So it is taking care of all this. So MongoDB comes with auto rebalancing feature. So config server takes care of all that. And then we're going to need a router, which is MongoS. So MongoS is our router and this is what is going to be exposed to the public. So whenever a web server is trying to interact with the MongoDB database, they will come to MongoS and issue the queries. So queries can be uh, resolved using one shard or they can be resolved using multiple shards. And this MongoS is responsible for doing the query splitting. So it splits the query into sub queries and uh, executes the queries on different shards and then when it receives the response it will come back and uh, collate or aggregate or whatever it needs to do to return the response back to the user right so these are our four pieces that we will need for sharding so the number of shards are two here just for demo purposes it can be any number of shards depending on the data requirements right so let's see how this goes so for this, I have installed Docker and uh, as you can see, as of now, there are no containers running and I just have one image downloaded already, which is Mongo. Right? And we're going to spin up our containers now. So for this, we'll go to VS Code. I have already composed a YAML file. So let's see how this goes. So like I said, we're going to need four services. So config server, shard one, shard two and a Mongo S. Right? And the config server will be a replica set because config server holds our data. So replica set is nothing but uh, it has, um, instead of one server, there are three servers and uh, the other two servers are just keeping copies of the main data, right? So we'll talk about replication and all those things in a future video, but for now, let's just think of them as backup servers, right? So there are going to be three servers in this and uh, all three of them are holding metadata of our shards. And this is shard one. Shard one will also be a replica set and it will hold data of our main collections, right? So this is running on port 27018. Our config server is running on 27017. And shard two is again, so very similar. It will be part of the replica set and it will be running on 27019. And our Mongo S, which will be running on 27020. This will be exposed to the public outside world. Right. And uh, this Mongo S will take in our config server as our main configuration engine, which will in turn hold the metadata for the shards. Right. So all of them will work together. Now, if you have um, Docker extension installed, you can start all the services with just one click. Otherwise, I've made a readme file, which has all the instructions that we need to do this demo. So we'll try to use this one. So let's see. So we're going to follow these steps. So first, you're going to clone this uh, repo. I'll put up a link here for cloning. And then uh, 
Once you have cloned, we're going to start with this command docker compose up, which will just take this file as input and start running all these services. So we'll open up a terminal and uh, we will start this docker compose up. Okay, now all our containers are started. Okay, now we are good. All our containers are started. We'll just verify this. So in my Docker desktop, I can see all my containers. So I have my config server running on 27017, shard one here, shard two on 27019, and Mongo is on 27020, right? Great. Now what we'll do is we'll continue and follow these steps. So we are up and running and this will launch all this and we're going to initialize the replica sets so for this we're going to need to go into the terminal of each of these containers and initialize them so you can do it both ways first way is to copy this command and put it in this terminal that way you're going into the terminal of config server other way is to just execute the command in the docker desktop by going here so i want to go to config server first and go to exec so this is basically the terminal of this container and I can run any command here. So I'm going into the Mongo shell of this container. And here I'm going to initialize the replica set. Okay, and that is done. So we're going to repeat this process for a couple of more shards. So for going into shard one, this is the command let me go into shard one, go to exec and go into the Mongo shell and initialize the replica set. We'll repeat the same thing on shard two. So for shard two, let's do it from our terminal just to show you that they both work the same way. So this is going into the terminal of a container named shard2 and inside that it is executing mongo sh command for this port. Okay. Great. Now we can do the initialization here. Okay, done. So all that is done. Now we can exit out of it like this. And finally we can go into our mongo's router. This is where all the magic happens. Now I'm connected to Mongo shell inside the Mongo's router. Now we need to connect the shards to this router. Let's see. So let's add our first shard, which is running on 27018 port. Now this shard is added. Let's add our second shard. So this is done and now we can check the status by using sh.status. Let's see what we find. So in sh.status we can see that in the shards array we can see a couple of objects and this is shard 1, this is shard 2. So our shards are registered and in the databases we just see a default config database and our database is not yet registered. So let's try to do that now. So Let's enable sharding for our database. Our name of the database will be sharding demo. You can name it anything you want. And uh, we're going to use a users collection. We're going to add some users. And uh, the index that we're going to be using for sharding is going to be user ID. Okay. And we are informing Mongo S and the sharding system that we are going to use user ID for our splitting of data okay so that is done so we're saying that inside sharding demo database use the users collection and in the users collection use the user id for sharding okay and now we can start using this database okay now let's see the status again now if we see inside databases now we can see our database is available sharding demo 
and uh, we have our collection users and we can see that the chunks are registered because we have given user id as our uh, shard key right so it's going to do auto split but that would require a large amount of data to actually trigger an auto split and uh, we'll see how that goes so let's try to insert some data and see how it works so we're trying to insert just a few records to see how our database is looking like so the inserts are done i've just inserted three records let's see db.users.count documents okay we have three let's actually see the data so we have our three records so our system is working fine and uh, now let's insert some more records. So I'm going to insert around 10,000 records for this demo. But if you want to see the actual uh, splitting, auto splitting, you can go for up to 1 million records because the uh, data size for a chunk is a for a chart is about um, 64 megabytes as the default threshold to enable splitting. So inserting 1 million records would take a long time. You can give it a try. I'm going to show you how to do manual splitting for 10,000 records. So this is going to take a while. Let's give it some time. I'll connect back with you once this is done. Okay, now we have our 10,000 records, 10,000 documents in our database. Now let's see how that looks like. So let's first see and verify the count. Now we have 10,000 documents. Let's see the distribution of data. So for checking distribution of data, we can use this command db users get shard distribution. So let's analyze this. So we are seeing that there are 10,000 documents and a total of 700 kilobytes and uh, all the data is available in shard one. So only one of the shards were used and 100% of the data is in shard one. So this is happening because our data size is really small, it's just 70 bytes per object. So in order to really trigger an uh, auto distribution between charts, try to take it up a notch and go for maybe a million records. So for now, we're going to do a manual split. So what I would like to do is uh, give it an, a boundary to do a split. So we're going to do an even split between the two charts. So for that, we're going to do uh, give it an error boundary. Basically, we are, we are saying that for sharding demo.users collection use the 5000 index as the maximum boundary so we are saying that the minimum can be zero and go up to 5000 as the first chunk or the first shard and then you split it from there so this was this will give it the error boundary now we can actually move a chunk to a different shard like this so we are saying that use this boundary and move the remaining to shard 2 okay so that is done now let's see the split and distribution again so you can see that now we have an even split 50 percent 50 percent of data so total of 10,000 documents split across two different charts right so this is how sharding works in general so the idea is to split the data across multiple charts and keep our load distributed across multiple charts right now there's one last thing i'd like to show you is that uh, when we talked about mongo as we said that this is available to the public world to expose right so let's try to use that concept so we'll go to mongo compass now and treat or treat this compass as a web server so think of this like as a web server connecting to our database and uh, for the web server the shards and the replica sets are uh, really not known they're oblivious but internally the mongo s is something that is exposed to us and internally mongo s takes care of uh, all the remaining sub querying and collation and aggregation and everything like that so we'll try to connect to mongo s and see how it looks like so we'll add a new connection and as you remember mongo s is running on 27020 port so we can see that here 27020 and let's connect to it so we have connected to it and we can see our database sharding demo and we have our user collection here, right? So we have our 10,000 documents. So when I requested for users collection, we can see the count, we can see the data and everything. And uh, 
we have not exactly specified which shard the data must come from. So that is being taken care by Mongo as the router, right? And we can perform inter shard uh, operations like getting collect data from multiple shards. We can do cross shard inserts, updates, and anything like that. And Mongo S is going to take care of all that. Right. So that's all I had for this video, guys. This was a quick demo about how sharding looks like in the real world. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do leave a like if you found this helpful. And I'll quickly see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Cheers.